Hello everyone, welcome back. It's Space Engineers Plus Me, episode 95. I'm Enigmas, and today we are going completely uh, off the beaten path with this. I just, I had this idea, I had to run with it, and we're going to show you uh, exactly what it is and how it's working so far. The, the idea, very simply, is I wanted to make an articulated leg. It's the, the alpha and the omega of the entire thing so far in my mind is I wanted to make a leg that can walk. Now in order to do that I decided to do a bunch of different testing. I built this test bed so to speak where I could set up a bunch of different things uh, build one, try it, learn from that, build the next one, try it carry on until we've kind of exhausted what we can do with this test bed. It doesn't uh, help that this thing is about as crooked as a person could build to try and give you an idea of how absolutely crooked it is this is about level where I'm flying and you can see how the test bed lines up that having been said it didn't really affect the testing of the legs so much which is good uh, but we have to be kinda quick setting up the different uh, versions because the Sun is going down and I don't know how well the lights that I put on this thing are going to work so this was the first test uh, and as you can see, it's broken. It's very broken. There's a lot of damage on the blocks. There's a rotor that's missing its head, and then there's the other half of the setup down here. And the whole idea was just a very, very simple test of if you can imagine a leg with a hip joint and a knee joint. And that was it. So we've got basically there's the hip joint up there, and there's the knee joint right there. And those are used to allow the leg to bend in specific places in support of that articulated motion so that we can allow it to walk and do those things that we wanted to do. That was it for this test. Just get it, the articulated bits in there and then beat the hell out of it for a while to see uh, how it would stand up. Just kind of something to do. So I put this arm on the underside and it's got a wheel on the underside or on the end of it that is set to dampening and strength and different things. So basically it would spin around and smack the, the leg because it was hanging down below the, the platform uh, and then I decided to record the whole thing from start to uh, brutal end and we're gonna time-lapse it for you just because it goes for a little while and I thought it was interesting having everything kind of working and doing the things that it was doing but you, you definitely don't want to sit there and watch it happen uh, unable to contribute to the motion or make any changes yourself so the time-lapse will be I think useful for this one and I wanted to see uh, first of all if it would, would work uh, with the the wheel and the friction and stuff like that as an agitator for this leg and it did it goes around and it hits it and the the leg wobbles around because the rotors are set to zero torque they're turned on so even if we had the braking force turned up it wouldn't matter they're basically just loose swivels at this point and we beat the crap out of it
So having done all that, having beat the crap out of it and spun it around in circles and done all those horrible things, uh, we've determined that one, this actually works pretty good because it doesn't appear to have taken any damage whatsoever, and two, this actually survived a lot longer than I expected that it might. Most of the damage that it sustained, dare I say, all of the damage that it sustained was when the lower section, call it the, uh, the shin, <laughs> folded back up on the thigh. And that's where this damage was done in here and ultimately the damage to the rotor and then it fell apart and that's the way that things work so I, I don't want to call it a successful test because it was so simple just having everything work together and not fall apart the instant something moved would be a successful test and we took it a little bit beyond that so that brought us to our first test of the actual articulation and again if you think of things in terms of a hip joint and a knee joint <laughs> this is this is not how it started. Uh, there's the uh, the hip joint right there, and the knee joint would be in here, of course. And then we've got this muscle, you might think, or tendon, or ligament, or whatever group of things you want to call it, that's connected together, and it's suspended by a rotor here and a rotor here. And then when you extend and retract the piston, it serves the function of making this knee joint articulate back and forth. And of course, it was me overextending it, and you can see I actually I specifically took uh, footage of me goofing around with it in case I broke it during the goofing around, and it was me overextending the piston that caused it to start behaving very, very badly the first time, and then I deliberately overextended it again, and it broke. That's when it broke. So, as long as we're not overextending it, it seemed to work fine. It would allow us to articulate the lower part of the leg uh, without having to worry about what's going on with the upper part of the leg. So that was successful, but one of the other things that I learned is just kind of taking a look at where things were uh, connecting with one another where we didn't want them to, uh, the shapes of certain blocks, the orientation of a number of things. I actually was taking notes as I went through the various different things that I would change for the next version to see if we can't get uh, a better functioning version of what we were working on. And it, it's a progress thing. It's not necessarily jumping to the next iteration and it's already perfect because we are so awesome. It's just a little bit better than it was before. So that was this, and this is obviously broken and will never be repaired. Uh, so this brings us to the final iteration for this round of testing. We're not done. It's not completely tested. I haven't come up with a final form factor or anything like that, but it's testing everything that we want it to test to be able to do, and it's doing it successfully. So with some adjustments, some modifications, and a few surprises, uh, we should have the fully articulated leg. And again, using uh, the human analog as a comparison, there's the hip joint there, and you'll notice we sort of um, pushed in the panel a little bit that this thing is sitting on and moved that thing back a little bit. Just so we had a little bit of extra room for uh, this stuff here moving and it turns out I didn't need it anyways. So uh, th there was an effort made to give us more room and realize that it wasn't going to be helpful. But there's the hip joint right up there. The knee joint is down in here somewhere right there. And you can see the lower leg is that part there and the upper leg is that part there and then attached to it are all of our piston assemblies we've got the one for the lower leg just like we had over here that this one's broken and this one is not uh we've got a rotor we've got a rotor we've got a piston and some merge blocks so that we can get everything to connect together which is pretty much impossible to do as you're building it we have to specifically go in and connect it together and again talking about footage that i got uh, because I thought to do it and glad that I did you can see the various different stages of connecting things together especially the upper leg uh, section this one took a little bit of doing because the angles involved but it's not difficult we're basically manipulating the rotors on the upper leg so that we can line up the merge blocks and then we extend the piston so that the merge blocks are close and we turn on the merge blocks and maybe, if necessary, give the rotors a tweak in the rotation or the piston a tweak in the extension, and the merge blocks should merge, and then voila, we have basically one complete unit. Now, this whole thing 
exists to provide um, a piston between a pair of rotors, a piston with a rotor at the top and a rotor at the bottom, and that's what gives us the articulation that makes the leg move. And in this case, now we've got the uh, the piston, also we could call the muscle, the ligament, the tendon, for the top part of the leg, and it is attached to the main body of whatever it is you were building. It, it can't be attached to any other moving part of the leg, uh, or it won't work, <laughs> sadly. But it's not that big of a deal because the leg has a restricted range of motion no matter what we do. So even if we have to have it attached to something solid, we can make it happen. It's not difficult. We just have to make sure that we have that planning in place and we know where we're going to put things so that they don't collide with one another when we don't want them to. And then we also have the lower leg. Same thing, a piston sandwich between a pair of rotors. Extend the piston, retract the piston. It makes the knee bend, so to speak. And that's the basics of an articulated leg. Now from here, there's basically two um, things that I want to look at, and they're varying in scope in terms of how long it's going to take and what it's going to involve. The first one is I want to look at the form factor of the leg and come up with something relatively final. Obviously, if you're actually using this on a, a ground-based ship, the the whole setup would have to be scaled to what the ship requires. It could be possible that you'd have a hard time with a very large ship with a very large leg. The pistons might not be able to do the job, for example. But I just want to get the, the general form factor in place, something that looks um, kind of fluid, almost organic, and at the same time works extremely well. The other thing that I want to take a look at is I'm finally going to poke my head into the scripting, programming blocks, blah, 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 so that we can control this setup very easily. You don't have to worry about manipulating two pistons per leg and however many legs that you want to have operating in order to move the damn thing. You'll just be able to activate certain programming blocks that have the script running that will move the legs for you and then you simply say, move the legs, uh, change the direction that the legs are going forward or reverse, stop the legs. That's all we really need it uh, to be able to do and if we can do that for two legs, we can do it for four, we can do it for six, we can do it for eight, however many legs we want, and goof around with something that could be very interesting. Uh, we would also, if we were successful in getting it that far, if, I'm saying if, we were successful in getting it that far, we would also look at adding uh, an ankle to this whole leg setup so that we can, um, you know, make our way across rougher terrain than maybe would be uh, expected and still be able to not have things bend and torque and snap and do all the other nasty bullshit that they like to do whenever we think we're making progress. But we'll see. It wouldn't be a complicated thing to add an ankles onto the ends of the legs. Uh, and with what I found with friction and stuff like that on wheels, if we were careful, we could make it so that even the, the, the feet that are connected to the ankle would uh, not slide on the on the ground as depending on how you placed them and what was going on so that could be kind of an interesting thing as well so that's what i've been working on messing around with these different systems and seeing what we can make work and what's kind of doomed to failure so far not too many things proven doomed to failure we are working with rotors we are working with pistons we assume nothing we take nothing for granted but in the next episode you'll see progress on this design uh, just because I, I just really felt tired of building ships and things that ultimately weren't going to work. This is a nice isolated little project that I can build and uh, it, it doesn't take long to set up a leg and test it and then we can go from there. So if you want to be informed when I add that next episode, the easiest way to do that is to uh, sub subscribe to my channel or follow me on social media. Links for social media in the information box below the video. Feel free to leave your comments and feedback. Thanks for watching guys and take care.